Call the ambulance. My God, this man's still alive. Welcome home, sir. Thank you. Here we are, my dear. Mason, this is Miss Wheatley. Ma'am. Miss Wheatley's room is prepared? Yes, sir. Splendid. Be a good fellow and take her bags up, will you? And Master Clive and Miss Christina, they're here? In the library, sir. And Master Giles, too? Yes, sir. Fine. Fine. Now, I can assure you, my dear, there's absolutely nothing to be nervous about. They'll take to you. Of that, I'm convinced. What a pity all our new family couldn't be here. Yes, I had to leave Elizabeth behind in Switzerland. She's bitterly sorry to miss the wedding, but her absence is unavoidable. Oh, I'm glad he's marrying again. I've been suggesting it for years. Oh, come now, you make yourself sound like an old crone. <laughs> <laughs> so he's finally decided to take the plunge. Oh, here they are. Clive! Clive, my boy, welcome home. <laughs> Hello, my darling. This is my son, Clive. Hello. I'm delighted to meet you. And my daughter, Christina? You'll have to nag him. He never wraps up warm in winter. Are you trying to tell me I'm an old man? <laughs> and this is my adoptive son, Giles. Hello. Always the last card in the pack. Well, some might say the joker. <laughs> <laughs> How about a drink? Do sit down, everybody. Don't stand on ceremony. Miss Wheatley's bags are in her room, sir. And I thought some refreshment after your journey. Good man. It's all right, I'll see to the drinks. Very well, shall you go? Uh, Mason, I hear your sister is unwell. Quite poorly, sir. If there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, sir. They've taken you to their house. 
I was naturally very anxious to make a good impression. And what impression did my progeny make on you? Christina is delightful. And already spoken for, I suspect. She and Giles. They seem devoted to one another. They'd have me believe the mere acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you make of Clive? <laughs> he has your sense of humor. He himself will be marrying shortly. I'm surprised he didn't suggest a double wedding. We'd steal his thunder and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel relaxed now. I hope your children feel the same. My children are full grown. They'll all be going their own separate ways before very long. Then I will give you children, Luke. Nothing would delight me more. Dearest Anne. The time. You'll be late, and you've said the meeting can't start without you. I'll not be away for more than a few hours. Psychical research. How long have you been involved in it? That's some years now. And your photography? Uh, early days. Are you as reticent with Christina about your work as you are with me? It is not something that would interest you particularly. Everything you do interests me. What exactly do you photograph? You wouldn't believe me were I to tell you. Try me. I think not. Darling, is something wrong? Nothing. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Very well, in all fairness, I ought to tell you. You will think it preposterous, if not positively macabre. I can think nothing unless you explain. My colleagues and I... Sir Edward, whom I've met. Photograph the dead. A smudge? Here? And another one, here, and finally, another here. At first, I was tempted to explain away the smudges I've shown you by bad exposure. But, Sir Hugo, three different pictures taken on three different pieces of equipment by... Three different photographers. It is perplexing, to say the least. All three slides, apart from the smudge you've seen, have one thing in common. Your president will explain. Sir Edward. Each of the subjects in the slide Sir Hugo has shown you was about to die. I myself took the first slide at the moment the subject died. Sir Hugo took the second slide. And also recorded a man in the process of dying. Now, the third photographer has testified that he, too, waited until the moment of death before recording the subject. And each slide is characterized by that smudge. Your president has suggested what that smudge might be. I examined the slide I made and the equipment I used most carefully, lest the smudge was due to a faulty recording. I, too, needed to assure myself that nothing could happen to prevent an accurate recording. Your president and I then worked closely with the third photographer, examining the equipment he used, questioning him about everything he did. Circumstances were perfect. Nothing technical could have gone wrong. The three of us were therefore obliged to conclude one thing and one thing only. I myself prepared the plates and designed and developed the impedimenta used in the recordings and I am satisfied it was used properly. Gentlemen, what you have seen, what we have recorded, is the soul at the moment it departs the body. At death. You don't really believe that, Father. You can't photograph the soul, given it exists. What were those smudges? Thumbprints, I suppose. Probably. I've always taught you to keep an open mind, but little did I know you'd turn out to be such a skeptic. I'm cautious, that's all. Wary about claims made by researchers into so-called psychic phenomena. When do you return to Switzerland? Elizabeth is expecting me in a fortnight's time. You've chosen wisely. She'll make you a fine wife. And you and Anna, you're ideally suited. Good evening, sir. Oh, Mason, about your sister. I don't want you worrying about money, so refer the doctor to me. That's very kind of you, sir. Thank you again. 
Tell Miss Wheatley I'm home. Very well, sir. Father, you're generous to a fault. We Cunninghams have our obligation. For 500 years now, we have enjoyed enormous privileges. Privilege means power, and we must never abuse that power. We're in the midst of change, and we must ensure that change is for the best. How do we do that? By peopling the parish with successive little Cunninghams to ferret out the mischief makers and bring about social reforms? <laughs> and why not? I'm sure you and Elizabeth will have no objection to making your contribution. I suppose your father will approve of our engagement? Well, of course he will. But I think you'd better say nothing until after he and Anna are married. <laughs> Look at him. He's behaving just like a schoolboy. Only your father would think of a day on the river in March. <laughs> Here we are. Stay like that now. <laughs> like this. Fine. Now, get ready. Well, don't take all day. It's freezing. Now. Move! Am I? <laughs> Thank you. Let's hope it works a second time. It will. Where are Clive and Anna? They're over there, lurking behind that tree. <laughs> are you ready, Father? Stay just where you are. Like this. That's fine. Now, after three. One. Two. Three. Stop. Anna. We've had to call off the search. She must have been swept over the weir. What are you doing? Why are you working so late? I've been developing the pictures I took when... You mean of Clive? Of Clive and Anna. Oh, you can't. Why not? It's the only memento I have. I must see them again. I must see them now. Turn down the light, will you?
The sludge. What is it? It moved. You saw it for yourself. It bore a marked similarity to this much here. And here. And this one here. What on earth is it? The Psychical Research Society maintains that there are photographs of the soul departing the body. And that's what you've recorded on your moving pictures? Well, that's what we saw just now? No. Well, but then what? What we saw was moving towards Clive. You said yourself it moved. Yes. Was the smudge trying to warn Clive of danger? Did Clive see it? Had he known he was about to die, I must find out. How can you? It's impossible. I have to take another photograph. Of what? There is a widely held belief that a dead man retains the indelible image of death. That's superstition. Possibly. I have to photograph Clive. Now, after all this time, after two weeks. Not a pleasant task, but one I cannot neglect. But even if that belief turns out to be true, what do you hope to achieve? I've got to determine the true nature of what we've just seen. On that sheet and on those slides. By photographing the remains of your dead son. I can't imagine I've that... got to know if Clive knew he was about to die. I shall go out of my mind if I don't know. And you expect me to help you? I beg you, Giles. Light the flash when I tell you. Now. <laughs> Nothing. Not a mark. May I turn the light up now? If you like. It's all right, my boy. You needn't pretend. I'm afraid I don't understand. You don't approve of what I'm doing, do you? It would worry Christina if you've told her. You must never tell her. Ever. Of course not. May I speak frankly, sir? You're exhausting yourself on experiments that can prove nothing except harmful. So you presume to know what it is I'm looking for? By some chance, your camera has recorded a strange manifestation. Well, neither of us know what it is. Don't we? My researches into psychic phenomena show me that in Greek mythology they referred to the spirit of death. They called it the Asphyx. It manifests itself only in times of danger, having existed in eternal agony. It seeks out the dying or the damned, for only by possessing those about to die is it at last released from unspeakable torment. Don't you see? The smudge we saw, the shadow, it disappeared the second Clive hit the water. Presumably possessing it. Well, why doesn't it appear in the new photograph? Possibly because it was absorbed instantly and vanished instantly. So it manifests itself only briefly. I should have photographed Clive's body the moment we recovered it from the water. Please, stop what you're doing now. This isn't science. You've no right to experiment with this. It. The spirit of death. The Asphyx possessed my only son, sought him out, and in him found release, and you say I have no right. So you invoke your inconsolable grief as justification for a series of pointless and dangerous They experiments. are not pointless! I will not have you call my work pointless! I'm sorry, I, I spoke out of turn. No, it's I who should be sorry. I didn't mean to shout. Sir Edward Barrett. My dear Barrett! You will have heard. Heard? Heard what? A step back into the dark ages. <laughs> At times you're so imprecise. A public execution. A hanging? When? Tomorrow. In the market square. What? Is there nothing you can do to prevent it? Nothing. With all due ceremony, the authorities will intone a prayer, ritualistically snap a man's neck, 
and then leave him hanging there, lifeless at the end of a rope. I dare hardly believe it. There hasn't been a public execution for years. Who ordered it? Judge Hall. As an example, he says, necessitated by the appalling increase in crimes of violence. Oh, the reform movement has pleaded for clemency. Deaf ears. Hugo, I want you to record it. You mean, photograph it? Photograph a hang? So that the whole barbarous spectacle is put on record. Well, this is not the first time we have campaigned together, and I'll always do everything I can to help bring about reforms, but I see little point in photographing. If we're to succeed in our efforts to reform, then we must show people the revolting acts that are carried out in their name. Hugo, please don't fail us now. All right. I'll do it. It has been your last wish that no prayer be said, but it is nonetheless in your interest that I beseech the Almighty to have mercy upon your unrepentant soul. Such persons as stood convicted of notorious sin were put to open penance and punished in this world, that their souls might be saved in the day of the Lord, and that others, admonished by their example, might be the more afraid to offend. Have the slides. I've just this minute finished drying them. Thank you. These will be most useful to the movement. Both slides and moving images. Moving images? I don't understand. Uh, I mentioned before I've invented a device whereby I can record moving objects. Then we must show both sets of images. No. The moving pictures I wish to keep for my own private purposes. And what are they? I'm afraid I cannot tell you. Oh, come now, Hugo. We have no secrets. We must share what knowledge we glean from our researches. You've made some new discovery. Possibly. But it is not something I wish to discuss. You've other theories, I can tell. About what, though? The apparition at the hanging. Have you recorded that in movement? I've told you, I don't want to say anything to anybody. Until you're absolutely certain, of course. Perhaps. But you go. That is all.
do nothing by halves, do you? No sign of the asphyx. So what do you conclude? It manifests itself but for an instant, and then it's gone. Now, let's compare it with the moving pictures. Good grief. I tell you, it saw me. The hanged man's ass, it saw me. And stopped. You saw for yourself. It seemed to be struggling. Oh, it couldn't possibly have seen you unless it's possessed of some unearthly intelligence. Then what explanation have you? Well, it seems more likely it was halted by some kind of barrier. Such as? Well. The man didn't want to die, obviously, so perhaps he was generating some kind of resistance. Generating? Well, if not resistance, then... No, resistance could have been generated, yes, but not by a dying man. Well, then by whom? Not by whom. By what? The Times report speaks of some strange light. Well, they're right. It was my strange light. On the film I've just shown you, the asphyx halted. But at the precise time, I was using my light booster. I don't follow. If I'm able to record the asphyx because of the fluid with which I sensitize my photographic material, then why shouldn't the light my booster generates determine the asphyx movements? How is the light generated? It's a phosphide compound. When I press the trigger, it releases accurately measured droplets of water onto these crystals, generating a brilliant beam Blinding of... Blinding blue light. So. Your curiosity is getting the better of you after all. Well, it was you who taught me the value of an inquiring mind. So tell me, what exactly are you up to? When I've put my theories to the test, I might tell you. But you must make me a promise, not a word to Christina. Oh, I really think you ought to take her into your confidence. She'd never even begin to understand. Very well. And if you think it's in her best interest to say nothing, of course you have my word. Giles, find me a guinea pig. No wonder he's complaining. You've not fed him for two days. He shall have something to eat now. Come along, boy. Food. You're going to kill him. I know what I'm doing. Now, let's line our little friend up. Get him into focus. Are you ready with the booster? Yes. The second I say now, press the trigger. Save you on booster. The booster. Turn on the booster. There it is. It has its aspects. Turn off the light. You'll be able to see it better. Keep your booster on. Train the light on the aspects. There, at the left-hand corner of the cage. Now, the next step. We've got to try to transfer the asphyx into this container. Do exactly as I tell you. Now, carefully, very carefully, bring the beam across towards this box. Now, try, it's not easy. Then take it slowly, very slowly. Giles, you're almost there. A fraction 
more. That's great. They won't merge. They've got to merge. One seems to be rejecting the other. One of the aspects seems to be the dominant one, the stronger. Just keep your booster on. Asphyx, we'd only have to transfer this container to the vault. The water pipe that's fed by the spring. We need only link the container to the pipe by a drip tap, and the drips of water falling on the crystals would sustain this life forever. Do you realize what we've done? Yes. That guinea pig can't die. There's nothing in the world can kill it now, unless we release its asphyx. Hand me that dropper. An antidote. Mm -hmm. You have every reason to smile. Your experiment has been a triumph. The little beast will be as right as rain by morning. Can we ensnare a human, Asphyx? We can try. Yes, sir. <coughs> I've not eaten for two days. Why have you kept my food from me? You deserve to be punished. Because you can read and write. You've got these wretches to protest about conditions here, didn't you? You got me into trouble, didn't you? You think yourself better than me? At least I'm strong enough to work and earn a living. I need a doctor. Please, get me a doctor. You get down on your hands and knees. Or there'll be no bed for you tonight. Oh, Sir so Hugo, what can I do for you, sir? Have a fever. A fortnight. No. Please. Get me a doctor. <coughs> this man is desperately ill. He is to come with me. But, Sir Hugo, you can't possibly. institution from which your father took me. What? I don't understand. Beat house. Beat house? <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm a foundling on a doorstep. I could be any... No, I'm no match for you. Why should that stop me loving you? Perhaps in time it might. No. <laughs> then let's ask your father now. Yes, Giles. But please tell me what you're experimenting with. I went into the laboratory. What? There was a... a sort of box. Something was in it. I'm sorry. You weren't meant to see that. What is it? You mustn't say anything. Giles, please, why won't you tell me? Your father has sworn me to secrecy. 
That's the least I owe him. But that man, why is he here? So, do you agree to my proposals? I have no choice. Your hospitality has been lavish. The condemned man ate a hearty meal. <coughs> what did the doctor say? You're an educated man. A civilized man. So you bury me like a gentleman? I'm to be grateful. The doctor has done his best. His best is not enough. It's tubercular spine. And the tuberculosis... Tell me. ...has spread to your lungs. How long have I got? A day. Perhaps two. If you've no objection, I should like to go to my bed. Giles here will help you. We need no help. I've slept in hovels and doorways, but never, I confess, amidst the paraphernalia of a laboratory. But if that is my lot, who am I to question the wisdom of my maker? Before I go, I, I, I would like to ask one thing. And what is that? When I'm dead, spare me the dissecting table. And bury me in the earth. <coughs> Alive, I've been no use to man or beast. But dead, I may feed a few dried tubers. Good night. towards the aspects.
Remove the bandages. The doctor now, said... this moment. Please, Father, be patient. Let the doctor remove the bandages. Leave me, child. One day I will explain. Send Giles to me. Yes, Father. You wanted to? Ugly? Yes, but I'm not required to look at it. You shouldn't have removed the bandages. It handicaps me in my work, and my work cannot wait. Yes. You mean your real work, the true nature of your experiments. So you have guessed. Immortality. Yes. You've seen for yourself that it is within my grasp. Trap a man's asphyx in that beam of light and seal it off so that it has no way of escape and you have immortal man. I can't even begin to grasp such a concept. Why? Because of the time it would take. The duration of a mere heartbeat. The blinking of an eye. So vast is eternity, having neither beginning, nor middle, nor end. But why pursue immortality? I once told Clive we are in the midst of change, and we must ensure that change is for the good of all. Well, once immortal, one could govern the course of events perpetually, and with the wisdom of each successive age and civilization. Sir, you've lived a fine and honorable life. You have responsibilities, yes, but one of them requires you to know when to relinquish power. Giles, I need your help. I want you to summon up my own aspects, to trap it and put it in the vault next to my son. Think of the future. Imagine your grief when Christina predeceases you. You give me an idea. What? You love Christina, don't you? Yes. Should you approve, we'd like to marry. I had expected that. Help me to immortalize myself, and I will immortalize you and Christina. Well, what do you say? Let me tempt you more. Think, man. Think of the power. be sure that nothing will go wrong. For myself, I am prepared to take the risk. If the experiment fails and I die, then it is God's will. If I survive forever, then it is also God's will. What do you have in mind? Tomorrow I will show you. Let me explain. The experiment works. You and I will seal off my ass, fix in here. Giles, I want you to order me a lock for the door of the vault. A lock for which there is no key. A lock that will make that door impregnable. A combination lock? Exactly. I must ensure that my ass fix cannot escape and that I must never be tempted to release it. The number of the lock you will write on a piece of paper and put it in my desk. When I am immortal, I will destroy the paper. And should the experiment fail? And I die? Then it is here I wish to lie alongside Clive. In the event of my death, you will take a letter to my executors. You'll find it in my bedroom. Do you understand? Perfectly. How do you propose to summon your aspects? What form of death have I chosen? You speak with great confidence. I have spent much time praying for guidance. But what method?
How on earth did you get here? What's the matter? Let you out. I've built a small lever in the side of the chair so that I may increase the current while you operate the beam. I must allow the voltage time to build. Otherwise, you will not have time to contain my aspic. Is that clear? Off you go, then. Off with you. tightly as possible. Now, take the straps and fasten them across my thighs and across my chest. Father, are you asleep? You are very quiet, Giles. I'm afraid. Of what? There is nothing to fear. I don't think I can go through with this. You have spoken of a debt you owe me. If you mean what you say, just do as I ask. But if you were to There cry... is no turning back. Very well. As tightly as possible. Are you ready with the booster? Yes. There are enough crystals? I've allowed for the widest possible margin of error. Switch on. Whatever. 
whatever happens, don't let go. Is he all right? Yes, I think so. Now, you're going to swing your light on its pivot. By doing so, you govern its movements. Now, slowly, slowly. Swing your light towards me. Towards this light. I've got to absorb your beam into mine to understand. I've got it. You can let go now. Don't touch! He's going to be all right. Father, it's me. It's Christina. You saved his life. Giles. Giles. Thing in the box. You'll sleep until morning. In two or three days, you'll be fine. We were conducting an experiment with electricity. It got out of hand. You're not telling me the truth. Very well, come with me. Ought we to leave him? I promised your father that whatever happened, I'd tell you nothing about his work. But, Giles, he nearly died. You owe it to me to explain now. Help me with this. If I tell you, you must promise to forget everything I've said. I can make no such promise. Unless you explain, Just do as I, I say. Take the other hand. By ensuring a constant but regulated flow of water falling into little drops onto the crystals, your father's asphyx will be ensnared for eternity. Then, whatever happens, he cannot die. Never. He's now immortal. How can I believe you? If she hadn't arrived when she did, you might have died. That the experiment might need two pairs of hands was an oversight that could have proved fatal. So I had to tell her. 
And of course, she doesn't believe you. Well, why should she? Then we must convince her, Giles. I've just taken your father to the station. He's gone to London with Barrett to give a lecture to the Psychical Research Society. Oh. When will he be back? Later tonight. Then we have an evening together. You seem upset. No, Giles. You're not telling me the truth, Christina. There's nothing I'd hide from you. Christina, my darling, if something is causing you anxiety, you mustn't hesitate to tell me. Very well. I'm afraid for my father. Afraid? Why? Because he's immortal? Yes, because it's wrong. Your father believes his experiments are only for the best. How can they be? He should realize that none of us was ever meant to be immortal. We're all of us merely creatures of God, not God. There is so much he can achieve by being immortal for you, for me. How? You want us to stay together for as long as we can. Nothing would make me happier. Then let him immortalize us both. Christina, are you afraid of facing everlasting life with me? Oh, if only I could believe, truly believe it was possible. Your father is a brave and brilliant man. He will prove to you that immortality is possible. Giles, how? Tomorrow I will show you. You must tell me now. Tomorrow. It's time for dinner. His bed's not been slept in. He's all right. Tell me where he is. Come with me. Why did you lie when you said he'd gone to London? There's nothing to fear. I am afraid, don't you understand? Your father and I will put your mind at rest. Why the secrecy? Give me a glass of water, will you? Father's quite safe. His coffin was airtight. He's been shut in it all night and he survived. What further proof do you need? Rose. Tell Jenkins I am not at home to call him. Sir. 
Well, Christina, have you decided? I'm still uncertain. Giles has told me that you would like to marry. That is so. Then you have my blessing. Father, thank you. Have you decided when you would like to marry? At once? We have your father's permission, but there are conditions. What? Conditions. You have had plenty of time to think about it, and you know there is nothing to fear. You must allow me to immortalize you. But I am afraid. Unless you overcome your fears, there will be no marriage. How can you? How can you? You! Christina! Please leave us. I wish to talk to your father. I'll not allow you to force her into anything. She is so weak. Obdurate. She has every right to be. I was too. I've told Sir Edward the Master's not at home, Miss Christina, but he insists on seeing you, so I've shown him to the study. But I... All right, Jenkins. Yes, Miss Christina. Ah, my dear Christina, do you know when your father is returning? I'm afraid I don't. I see. Then please tell him I shall call again tomorrow. No, please don't go. I... I'd like to talk to you. I can make her. And I will. Let me talk to her again. Very well. Allay her fears, if you can. My dear, you must tell me what it is specifically that upsets you. Explain to me the precise nature of his work. He's been able not only to... something on moving pictures. But he's also... Christina! I'd like to talk to you. Giles, I can explain. Giles, I want to know what it is that Sir Hugo is doing that so upsets his daughter. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I urge you explain. Is it something to do with the moving images he told me about? Of the hanged man? But what has he recorded? What does it show him? What has he discovered? For the sake of everyone, I must know what his work entails, its ramifications. If Sir Hugo has made a breakthrough, then... I have. But I do not wish you to know what it is. You have no right to pry. How dare you insinuate yourself into my household? Hugo, I'd hope... Hope to what exactly? Concern yourself with my work when it's none of your business? I called to ask you if you'd chair a special seminar and to tell you about a very exciting new research project. I have projects of my own. And they have nothing to do with you. Now, if you will excuse us. Jenkins! Sir Edward is leaving. What did you tell him? Nothing, Father. I always thought I had my own daughter's trust, her absolute trust. But you have, I No one must know you. anything of my work. Do you understand? I only said that you were making yourself tired. I am not tired, merely impatient. Well, have you made up your mind? She's in no condition to decide anything now. Ever since Clive died and my beloved Anna, I've wanted only to ensure that the Cunningham line should be continued. But if it has come to nothing... No, do not question me. I want you to marry Giles. I want you to have children. I will immortalize you all. The Cunningham shall survive forever. <laughs> Having lost Clive, your brother, I must never lose you. Then I will do whatever makes you happy. Christina, my dear, you must try to understand, if you can, what compels me. I do, Father.
let me use the chloroform. You must remain conscious while the blade descends. The Aztecs must sense your fear. It will otherwise not appear. I love you, and we've made sure that nothing can go wrong. As a precaution, I have linked the drip taps direct to the water main by this rubber pipe. So, there shall be no danger of the water supply running out during the experiment. Uh, Giles has the brake of the guillotine and his booster lever at hand so that he can use both at the same time. Giles? Then release the blade, but very slowly. Give the Aztecs time to appear. Then, when I have clapped it, Hold the blade. to let her die. She couldn't have lived her head. It was... What are you doing? The number of the combination lock. What do you want it for? I want to go to the vaults. Why? We've laid Christina at rest. There's no need to go there. I have every need, Giles. I don't understand. My asphics. Why? It's sealed off. No one can get to it. But I must. Uh, to ensure that it's safe. I'll do that for you. I am going to release my asphics. You no longer want him, Otto. Damn to eternal guilt, damn to eternal remorse. And if you release your aspects. But keep the combination lock, it's here somewhere. 
I asked you, if you release your asphyx... There's nothing stopping me. I want only to atone. I want to join my children whose deaths I hold myself responsible for. I want to join Anna. We made a pact, remember? And now I ask you, release me from my obligation. You were to immortalize me. But can't you see that providence is not to be tampered with? Between us, we have killed the woman we loved. How am I to expunge my guilt? That may take time. So I must become immortal so that time is mine. Besides, I must survive to carry on your work. Then I will keep my promise. If you feel impelled to carry on with the experiments, then you surely must. But in return, you must make me one promise. When I have immortalized you, release my asphyx and let me end my life. Let me join my children. Hello. Hugo plans and Hugo schemes. Hmm? Well, I too can plan and scheme. I have refined the light booster so that the trigger, once pressed, holds itself fast. It is then safe for me to attend to the second booster. I've done that. I've well, renewed the crystals. Oh, I've been patient. You must not forget your promise to me, Giles. Rest assured, everything will go as planned. Don't fail me as I failed Christina. The number of the combination lock. Is it in my desk? I'll go and look. Don't worry. If anything should happen to me, you'll find the number written in this envelope. You are wise to take every precaution. Now, I tested the block and pulley earlier, and the gas and the oxygen. What? But once I'm in there, it may take you some time before you can hoist it up and release me. So if anything does go wrong, God forbid, you can turn off the gas and feed through the oxygen. Well, are you ready? And waiting.
the light booster. It will work. I'll give you oxygen. killed you. I've killed you too. We made a pact, remember? You were to immortalize me. Between us, we killed the woman we loved. My ass fixed. We killed the woman we loved. How am I to expunge my guilt? That may take time. So I must become immortal so that time is mine. You were to immortalize me. How am I to expunge my guilt? That may take time. Time. I only want to return. I must survive, for I must be immortal, so that time is mine. Obey God's will, my friend. My only friend. My eternal and everlasting friend. My companion in immortality. <laughs> 